Hello, I'm going to talk to you today about scatter plots and line of best fit. So here I have a table and it says the local ice cream shop keeps track of how much ice cream they sell versus the noon temperature on that day. Here are the figures of the last 12 days. And you can see that the temperatures in Celsius and the ice cream sales are listed there. And um, so there's a variety of temperatures and the ice cream sales go up and down. So if you owned a business, it would be, you know, this might be your, your results. And you're trying to get a sense of what's happening as the temperature rises or falls so that you can plan. And a scatter plot can help you with that. But it's a little bit harder to see with the table. So we, we use a scatter plot or a graph. And I'll show you on the next screen. So once we put it in a scatter plot, it's a little easier to see. It has a positive trend, and you can see as the temperature increases, so as the temperature increases, the, the, um, the sales are also increasing. Okay, a little bit easier to see in a scatter plot. It's not a constant rate of change, and that's what makes it a scatter plot. And... Then we use it also to make predictions for future. So say, you know, we know that the temperature is going to be approximately a certain amount. We can predict how much our sales are going to be for this ice cream business. Okay. And one way we do that is using a line of best fit. So I'll give you a definition of the line of best fit first. The line of best fit is drawn on a scatter plot either a positive or negative scatter plot, and it's drawn very close to most of the data points. It does not, it's not a connect the dot type situation, and it doesn't have to go through every single data point, and you'll see in a minute. Um, and the line is used to make predictions about the data points, about the data from the table. And it also helps you make an equation from a scatter plot. So here, this is that same situation. It's the ice cream sales. And um, so I've taken the same graph and drawn a line of best fit. So now I can make, um, oh, I'll talk about the line of best fit first. So the line of best fit, um, the line of best fit is just, let me get my pen. So the line of best fit can help you um, make predictions. So if I, well, first of all, the line of best fit, as you can see, it's a straight line, okay? It, it went through some of the points, but not all of the points. It's kind of like a road down the middle of the points, okay? So that's how I think of drawing the line of best fit. You want to draw it as close as possible to many of the points, but again, it doesn't have to be touching all of the points. You want to get it through kind of the center. If you if you think of the points as um, you know being being that line being down the center of the points, okay. and then we use the line as a prediction. So <clears throat> here. Uh, predict the amount of sales if the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So we can look at 20 degrees Celsius and we follow it up and we look at the line. Now, once you draw the line of best fit, the points, those, those blue points become insignificant. They have no value anymore. We just look at the line of best fit and then we follow it over. So I predict that my sales would be approximately $425 in that range, okay? I can do other amounts, 14 degrees Celsius, follow it up, look at the line only, and follow it over. Uh, about $250 I can expect to make if the temperature's 14 degrees Celsius. And you can work backwards as well. 
For example, if I if I'm predicting that I am going to make, um, let's see, let's do, I'm trying to think of a good amount, um, $300. So I go to $300 on my graph right here. I follow it over. I go to the line and then I follow it down. So at $300, the temperature would be approximately maybe, I don't know, somewhere a little less than 16 degrees Celsius, maybe 15.8 degrees Celsius. That's a degrees. All right. So you can use now your line of best fit to make predictions. Once you, let's do $400, let's look at that one. So if I go to $400 and I follow it over, even though there's a point right there, I keep going. Even though there's a point right there, I go all the way to my line, not the point setter there. I'm using my line to make predictions and then follow it down. So that would be about 19 degrees. Your predictions are based on your line of best fit, not on the data points that are already there. Okay. That. You can also use the line of best fit to make an equation. So we have y equals mx plus b, which we've done before. And to make an equation, here's our line of best fit. You are going to find your slope and your y-intercept. So here, 0, 1, 2, my y-intercept would be 3. And my slope, I'm going to find two perfect points from my line of best fit, not from not from my data points, but from my line of best fit, okay? So I'm gonna find two perfect points. I'm gonna look here, here, I'm gonna use this one way up here, and I'm going to one, two, three, four, my rise is five, and then I have to find my run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my slope would be seven. So when I put it all together, my equation would be y equals five sevenths x plus three. Okay, so I can form an equation based on the line of best fit, not based on those black points that are there just based on the line of best fit. Okay, and I'll show you how to use the line of best fit equation to make a prediction as well. All right, so here. So this equation would be our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is 70 and my perfect point, I'm coming down 10 and over. I gotta look at my scale. This is going by fives. So my rise is negative 10. My run is 5, 10 is positive 10. So my slope is one, negative one. So when I put it together, my equation is y equals negative 1x plus 70. Now I can use that equation to make a prediction that perhaps isn't on my graph. So my temperature only goes up to 40. Perhaps I want to find a prediction for 80 degrees. So I'm going to use... 80 degrees, so y equals negative 1 
times 80 plus 70, y equals negative 80 is neg negative 80. So y equals negative 10. Well, negative 10 hot chocolates means that I'm probably not going to be selling any hot chocolates if the temperature is 80 degrees out. So you can make a prediction that if, the, if you're running a hot chocolate business, maybe you're not going to be open if the temperature is going to be 80 degrees. So you can use the line of best fit two ways, by making an equation and plugging in your information for x, or you can look at the graph following up, go to the line of best fit and come over. So using the line of best fit on your graph to make predictions. So you can use the graph line of best fit or the equation from the line of best fit to make predictions. Thank you very much.